Look, man, I know the temptation to use Psalms is extremely strong. They're marketed as steroid alternatives without side effects, and many of them have clinical studies demonstrating benefits in terms of building muscle. And a lot of these studies actually demonstrated medium to moderate side effects that don't really seem to be making men afraid of using them. So specifically in today's video, what we're going to do is explore whether or not Psalms are actually safe for human consumption and what you can actually do to safeguard yourself as a harm reductionist strategy to protect yourself against Psalms usage. So first of all, we need to learn a little bit about Psalms. What actually are Psalms? Well, Psalms are selective androgen receptor modulators, which were originally developed to prevent muscle wasting and bone loss in people with chronic diseases. Now, they selectively bind to androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissue, in theory, giving you the anabolic effects of testosterone without the androgenic side effects like hair loss or prostate enlargement. So it sounds great in theory, but in reality, there's a big problem. Before we get into the major problems, let's look at the most popular Psalms that are currently on the market. First of all, the most well-known one is Rad140 or Testolone. This is extremely potent for building strength, boosting muscle growth, and also supporting vascularity. The next one is LGD4033 or Ligandrol. Again, this one here is known as a bulking psalm. The next one is MK2866 or Osterine. I have personally used Osterine in micro doses and I'm talking at three milligram dosages to lower SHBG and it actually worked. Um, now, this is considered a mild entry level psalm. I don't recommend using it long term though. The next one we have is S4 or Andarine. This is known for leaning out but it actually is associated with some pretty severe side effects such as vision issues. Other Psalms include YK11, S23, ACP105, RAD150, which is a newer one, and then AC262. So Psalms are generally not safe for humans. Now, despite what online forums say, Psalms were never fully approved for human use. Now, all major clinical trials were stopped early because of liver toxicity, hormonal shutdown, and lipid abnormalities. Even the FDA has issued multiple warnings about unregulated SARMs products that are being sold online, where many are mislabeled, underdosed, and even contaminated. This is a really big issue, guys. You need to pay attention to this. Now, they were actually initially designed as experimental drugs, to treat conditions like muscle wasting, osteoporosis, and cachexia, but almost every single human trial was stopped early due to safety concerns. Now, let's be clear. There's no such thing as a completely safe SARM cycle. 95% of SARMs cause suppression of your natural testosterone production. When you take SARMs, your brain senses elevated androgens and it stops producing LH and FSH. Now, this means that your testicles actually shut down testosterone production. Now, in one study, just three milligrams of LGD4033 for three weeks caused a 55% drop in total testosterone. So if you think you're just taking something mild, remember that you're still suppressing your entire testosterone hormonal axis. So we can see that study there. So how do they actually suppress testosterone production? Well, Psalms bind to androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissue, just like testosterone does. And when those receptors are activated, your brain thinks you already have plenty of testosterone circulating. Your endocrine system works through negative feedback loops. So the hypothalamus releases GnRH or gonadotrophin releasing hormone. That GnRH signals to the pituitary to release LH and FSH. LH and FSH then tell your testes to produce testosterone and sperm as well. So when SARMs activate androgen receptors in the brain, the brain interprets this as we've got enough testosterone, stop producing more. So then the hypothalamus releases less GnRH the pituitary releases less LH and FSH, then you get testicular production shutdown. 
So here's the dumb way to use Psalms. First of all, people who are simply stupid, they buy cheap, untested powders from shady websites or dodgy websites. They also don't get blood work done. They don't use liver support, which is what I'm about to share with you. They run cycles back to back and rely on random YouTube PCT advice. And then six months later, they can't sleep. They've lost their libido. Their liver enzymes are elevated and their testosterone is worse than before. Don't be that guy. So here's how to actually protect yourself if you do decide to use Psalms. Now, again, this is up to you, man. Like, I don't blame you if you want to use Psalms. The temptation is there. Maybe you've had some friends that have used them safely without many side effects. I'd actually love to get some comments down below in the video description. Have you actually used Psalms and what has your experience been? There are two essential compounds that you must, and I mean must, run alongside Psalms. The first one is Tudka Prime. I'm going to elaborate on this one. Some of you may have heard of it before, but this is a supplement designed to protect your liver. It actually helps with bile flow. This is one of the most potent formulations that I came up with. I specifically formulated as a liver protective supplement. The second one is enclomiphene. You've heard about enclomiphene as a way to maintain testosterone production. Many guys out there are using enclomiphene alongside Psalms to avoid suppression of testosterone production. So first of all, enclomiphene, it keeps LH and FSH signaling active. Now, normally Psalms suppress the HPG axis, meaning your brain stops producing GnRH, which then shuts down LH and FSH from the pituitary. Now, this is why most Psalms users experience testicular atrophy or shrinkage, low mood, low libido, and slow recovery. Now, enclomiphene acts as a selective estrogen receptor modulator or a SERM that actually blocks estrogen feedback at the hypothalamus. Now, this actually tricks the brain into thinking that estrogen is too low and this actually bypasses the, it hacks, it's a little hack here, it increases GnRH, boosting LH and FSH and it keeps natural testosterone production partially alive even while using Psalms. So it actually prevents complete shutdown, which is pretty incredible. So instead of your testosterone levels going to completely zero, you might maintain about 40 to 60% of baseline output, which drastically improves energy libido and well-being mid-cycle. As a reminder though, the second most important thing here that I wanted to share was around the impact that Psalms have on your liver. Most Psalms are orally bioavailable, which means you can take it in a capsule, you can take it in a liquid. The good news is most Psalms are actually bioavailable, which means you don't have to inject. But if you don't have to inject, then it actually has to go down the route and it has to be metabolized by your liver. So how do you protect your liver on cycle? This is where Tudka Prime comes in. This is a particular product that I've actually formulated, not only just for enhanced athletes. I've been prescribing Tudka for years to many of my clients, one-on-one clients that I work with. And just a heads up, you can use Lucas20, it's a discount code, Lucas20, at checkout to save 20% off if you actually did want to try Tudka Prime. Some guys that I've been working with have noticed that their liver enzymes, AST and ALT, it actually reduces it drops when using Tudka Prime, which is a great thing. So Tudka is a bile acid derivative that can prevent bile acid buildup and improve bile flow. It protects liver cells or hepatocytes from damage, from damage caused by elevated enzymes and oxidative stress. And it also stabilizes and supports mitochondrial function. And most guys that take Psalms completely overlook this. Bile flow is essential for hormone metabolism, digestion, and detoxification. Now, when bile becomes sluggish, you don't just get liver toxicity, you get hormonal imbalances, brain fog, and poor recovery. Now, Tudka Prime actually combines pharmaceutical-grade Tudka with L-ergothionine or Mito Prime. This is a rare amino acid that protects the mitochondrial DNA and cellular energy systems, and 
The bottom line is that Tutka Prime is your first line of defense to keep your liver healthy whilst on cycle. Now, the second ingredient in Tutka Prime is an ingredient that actually outperforms glutathione. Yes, you heard that correctly. Some of you probably know about glutathione, but this actually outperforms glutathione. It's called Mito Prime. Now, this has a up to 34 times more effective than glutathione at scavenging free radicals. Um, just remember that Tutka Prime will be linked in the video description down below. Make sure you check that link in the video description down below. Now, it also has a much longer half-life than glutathione, and it ha even has some longevity research behind it as well. So here's just a, another reminder and an important message. If you do take SARMs, here's the blood work that you need to do whilst on cycle. You can see this whole list here of hormones, liver function, lipids, kidney function, glucose and insulin, inflammation and stress, thyroid axis, and general health. Take a screenshot of this, set a reminder to do this. And that pretty much wraps up today's video on protecting yourself whilst using uh, SARMs or even this actually still applies to guys that are on heavier gear as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a thumbs up and please hit subscribe to stay up to date. And as a reminder, use the discount code LUCAS20 at checkout if you did want to actually try Tutka Prime.